What's up? We're back with the never ending tier list. This is the master tier list, the one that has like nearly a hundred brands. We've already done two episodes. We've barely scratched the surface, but we're going to take a look at more brands today. We're going to look at their most recent collection, lookbook, whatever they have available, and we're going to rank them. Now, here are the tiers. We have the S tier, only the best of the best. You hear me? Only the best. A tier, almost the best. B tier, pretty good. Fair, pretty good, very good, whatever. whatever. C, uh, some good stuff, some really not good stuff. Then we get into the craziness. The Marshall's clearance rack, where you, you really just shouldn't be touching it. And finally, the Forbidden Dungeon, where only the naughtiest of the naughty brands go as well as brands like Pierre Moss, who just haven't done anything in like two years or whatever. So those are the rankings. And where do we begin today? Hyder. Hyder Ackerman. Let's see what's up. You know, has Hyder Ackerman really not done a show since fall 2020? Timothy Chalamet is still wearing Hyder Ackerman all the time. Where's your Hyder Ackerman coming from, Timothy? Okay, what do we got? All right, does, does Hyder Ackerman have a website? Maybe not, dude. What? Really? Hello? No, not news. Hyderackerman.b. Dot B? Oh, Belgium. That may that makes sense. This does not look like the brand's website. Oh my god. Alright, so what that means is we have to go to Essence? Essence, Men Fall Winter 2022. Clearly, there is a recent collection from Hyder Ackerman. They're just not doing lookbooks or runway shows, which is very, very odd for what seems to be a heavily active brand. But I mean, hey, to each their own. And history on Hyder Ackerman for me, I really like a lot of it, but sometimes it's really bad. Like, really just on look at a bull for me but then other times it's like this might be one of the best pieces of clothing i've ever seen um these right off the bat moon shape i don't know exactly what moon shape is maybe i need to brush up on my fashion knowledge but like this is a really cool shape the legs kind of come out like this um slightly high-waisted cropped of course we've got like a lot of basics here the, the wool coat not a basic but Shorts, rib tank tops, lounge pants. Oh, maybe this why this is why Hyder isn't doing any runway shows is because they're putting out like eight pieces a year. This is the only interesting like runway looking piece of the entire bunch. So maybe I'll die young like heroes die. It must be a quote from something, right? What does that say? What does the chest say? Of course, they don't give the reference here. Interesting. Very interesting. I wonder, is there more hider here? Is this really all they have? That's brutal. I had no idea that Hyder Ackerman was so inactive. All right. I was hoping that that was going to be a good one, that we were going to have a lot to dig into there. But Hyder, I mean... Hyder is more active than Pierre Moss, so does that put it at the top of the Forbidden Dungeon or at the bottom of Marshall's Clearance? I think because there are like eight items still in stock on Essence, Hyder goes to the bottom of Marshall's Clearance because if Essence can't sell these last eight pieces, that is where Hyder Ackerman is going. All right, next up, Tom Brown. Ooh, this is an exciting one. Tom Brown, Tom Brown. I really love what Tom Brown does, but it's also not my style. So I have a feeling I'm going to see stuff that I think is beautiful, impressive, but that I would also probably never buy or wear. But that's not like the criteria here. If it's incredible clothing, I've got to um, value that and award it. So let's see what Tom's doing. All righty. Spring 2023 menswear thank you very much i like what i see already the styling is like classic tom brown just weirdness 
I like that they're holding their little like auction paddles that I'm guessing. No, they don't. This is look one, not look 46. What are you doing, Tom? Okay. So it's an anchor over the face, even a rope going through the Liberty Spikes. Liberty Spikes were not something that I would have associated with Tom Brown, but I am here for it. Very weird proportions on this coat, like a three quarter sleeve khaki, like formal coat. What the fuck? Um, sometimes it's almost a little too playful, like the little anchors. It's kind of cutesy, like stuff that you would see at like a Target or something as like the like starter men's formal stuff. Like, you know, when you find you see a dude in the office if you've ever been in a corporate situation, it's a guy that clearly on their off time only wears like sweatpants, t-shirts and slippers, but obviously they can't wear that to work. So instead they're wearing like a short sleeve button down with some little like, uh, I don't know, turtle pattern all over it or something. That is sometimes the vibe that I get from Tom Brown with this kind of stuff. Um, but obviously this is done much better than that. Lots of little kind of logo tape detailing on all the sleeves. Looks like that's some underwear or like a corset going around there. Short shorts fully 100% in. And then just some nice little Oxfords here. And very cool like uh, mid-height socks. You don't see that every day. Look too. Oh, we're getting wild now. Tom Brown very well known for these very playful bags. I love this pulled fabric it's pulled everywhere even on the shoes very cool effect bare midriff with this shirt very formal but it's like undersized you see how shrunken this tie is that's what i really appreciate about tom brown is he's taking these very um stuffy concepts but making them fresh oh that's like a g-string or like a jock strap whoa no way Tom Brown is on some next level shit, dude. He really is. Like, there's not much more to say about some of this. Like, it's a kilt. Or you could also see, like, a female tennis player wearing this. You know what I mean? But Tom Brown is just like, no, this is menswear. Same with this top. It's menswear. This coat feels very feminine to me. But no, it's menswear. And also baby dinky tie. A man that wears a tie like this has nothing to prove. And that's how you know his dick is fucking massive, okay? Uh, this might be a step too far for me. It looks like, yo, you know what this looks like. This looks like someone, some dude, some just like punk dude broke into the back of the Chanel runway show, just took a look and threw it on and then ran out the door and somehow ended up on the, on the Tom Brown runway. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't pull it off, but I appreciate the uh, going for it -ness. This kilt's awesome. The, this skirt is really sick. Very cool. It's just another evolution of the classic Tom Brown style. I think this is actually one of the most daring um, menswear collections I've seen from him in a long time because he's taking a lot of these tropes, these gender bendy tropes, and he's really hammering them home in this collection. But now we've seen eight looks and we pretty much know what we're getting, right? Oh my goodness. Are these the shortest, like the, the lowest rise men's pants that have ever been created? Because I think they probably are. This is like actually as close to a genderless collection as I have ever seen, I think. And I'm very impressed by it. And now you're probably seeing like, I would never wear any of this and I don't think I could pull any of it off but there's a lot to be appreciated here even if you don't like the clothes for your personal style the risks that are being taken and the innovation that's happening is impressive I feel like if, I, if you try to argue with me on that you're banned so don't <laughs> I probably wouldn't ban you we just have a nice discussion all right Tommy boy the pipes the pipes are calling my tone deaf geez tom brown he's an innovator um he is a gender bender he was a gender bender before that was cool 
uh, a tailor? Does he do stuff that is really pushing forward the mold? No, kind of actually like Rick Owens. He has what he does, and he's just always becoming... Tom Brown is always becoming more Tom Brown, just like Rick Owens is always becoming more Rick Owens. And I have to reward that. If I appreciate it in Rick Owens, I appreciate it in Tom Brown. Is it S tier? I'd put Tom Brown upper A tier. And that's saying something because most of the other brands that are way up here are brands I actually really, really like. But Tom Brown, I just respect so much and always find so interesting to pay attention to that it's undeniable. So yeah, easy A tier. All right, this brand, I kind of took a flyer on because I have no idea how active they are. So this, it kind of looks like it says 89%, but it's 99% is. That's the brand name. It's almost like I have to put in quotations. 99% is. That's the brand name. I needed to put the pause to make it make sense because it's a really stupid brand name. But let's see what they've been up to. Kind of like a mainstay of the essence sale, I would say. So I find it very unlikely that they would have a Vogue runway page. But let's see. Numbers. Three. Three? All right, where are we from? They've got a website at least. What? I thought they didn't have a Vogue page. Oh, because there's only one season up there from 2017. Jeez. All right, I think we got to go to the website, see if they have a lookbook or whatever. I have no idea what channel 99 is. So official and more, we are history. What is channel 99? Oh, are you broken? Is your website broken? Fashion brands need better websites, dude. Oh, 10th anniversary. That's nice, good for them. Good for them, but it's not what I care about. His history, maybe this is where they keep their collections. Don't, please just don't be like an about me page. Oh, sick. Fall, winter 2022, spring 2023. Perfect. Volume 17. Okay. Full lookbook. All right. Active brand. I love it. I need to like study this. Brand, stop crushing your blacks so much. The photographers know what I'm talking about. This looks like a, a black blob, right? I can't tell where anything starts or anything else begins. And that's because in their photo editing software, because it does look cool, admittedly, you take the blacks and you just take that slider all the way to the bottom end. And then it looks like this. It looks cool, but you also can't tell what anything is, which is very unfortunate. I'm going to assume these are like some sort of collab sneaker. I don't think they're making their own sneakers. Very cool raver goth style but nothing like to write home about mm, i am 99 percent heavy punk vibes i ain't mad about it but it doesn't scream like high fashion to me that almost looks like an anonymous like crypto bro kind of logo so which means i don't really care interesting pants looks like some interesting construction going on okay Maybe we need the video. Oh, we, some of the lighter pieces, we definitely can make out what's going on. All right, jeans, logo tape, punk patches, fishnets. Cool. I like the window pane effect. I like the like biker trucker cut. I like these snaps. This feels like halfway between Belmont and Rick Owens to me, and I'm here for it, even in a two piece. I I like it, surprisingly. The cut of the pants is very nice. Surprisingly good. Ooh, ooh, that like webbed net preppy v-neck vest. That's awesome. I've never seen someone, I've seen people do this style of knit, of course, but doing it in a kind of like prep school type of vest is something new to me. So I do appreciate that. Yeah, I'm not mad at what I'm seeing from what I can actually see. Now we're suddenly like in Tom Brown territory all of a sudden. Are these clocks or like fuel gauges? I can't really tell. It's a little like too blue. 
this is some classic like 99 is 99 percent is pants right here it's a bit much it feels a bit tortured it feels a bit y project i don't like the cut of the bomber here yeah bad cut ruins the look oh i'm guessing adidas collab easy peasy hmm this jacket similar cut but just the slightest bit longer in both the sleeves and the waist and it suddenly makes it 10 times better it's hard to tell what's going on up at the chest here but i think i like it okay some jeans classic like old school snap belt reminds me of the ones that you like if you'd go to bob's or something and you'd buy a pair of cargo shorts it would come with one of these belts like already in it very nostalgic for me okay I'm going to just look at a couple more. Yeah, this looks like a layered shirt of some kind and like a polyurethane trouser. Got some knitwear. Yeezy long jacket. I like the look of however they did this knit effect. Cool. I guess we'll end with this. What do you got for me? Oh, I spoke too soon. Giant pin on this like bright blue mohair cardigan whoa brain beanie <laughs> yo mind blown mind blown i'm just vibing with this collection like i don't think it's the best collection but i am just vibing with it and i'm having a lot of fun looking at it uh these pictures are so much better why don't you give me these pictures first damn really cool shirt very cool Okay, anything else I can bite into here? Very standard type of look. That one's boring. I am 99% from 1%. Kind of a lame motto. It kind of reminds me of like the ape shall never kill ape stuff that I'm also not a fan of with Bape. But you know what? In the grand scheme of things, I quite like this. So 99% is... Um, Look, there are brands that you could go to that could do this better. You could go to a Balenciaga. You could go to Balenciaga like a Raph Simmons, an Undercover, in some cases like a Comme des Garçons, and probably get this stuff, but slightly more authentic feeling. It just felt a little bit phony to me in a Holden Caulfield kind of way, uh, but I did like it. I'm going to put this above the row above Dior, but below Prada. It's not, it's not, it wasn't as good as Prada, but yeah, well done overall. All right, next up, ooh, we got one of the big boys. We haven't done too many, we've done like Balenciaga Prada, but that's like about it. Valentino, one of the biggest luxury brands on the planet. Where do they fall? Let's find out. All right, spring 2023. Is it all in the mainline collection? Do we have men? Do we have men? Why do we not get any menswear looks until like look 19? Okay. Well, here we are. This is what matters. Okay, Logo Mania is not dead with Valentino. No, no, no. Is this an entire pantsuit? Is this like a full jumpsuit right here? Okay, innovative, but like the all over V is just hurt my eyes. From a distance, they kind of look like scales, though, and it's not, like, the worst, I guess. Okay, bring me in. Beam me up. We got a double-breasted pinstripe blazer, but, like, wide pinstripes, which are kind of cool. A fairly see-through, like, mesh sweater kind of thing. Looks like with a wide neck. And some short shorts. You gotta have the short shorts sheer socks. Very, like, feminine and masculine at the same time. Um, it's not blowing me away, but I don't hate it. A lot of feminine energy here. This feels very effortless and easy. I like the necklace, too. Shoes are kind of weird. Yeah, in the peachy colorway, they already look super worn to me. Uh, the shorts, very in right now, of course. Uh, yeah, solid look. I'm sure... This sweater is really comfortable, too. I like it. It looks like it has options as well as to how you want to wear it. 
All right, the punks are coming out to play. This looks like a Balenciaga model right here, ready to kill your family. Jeez. So a lot of like see-through motifs. These, I always like how they look, but then when I order these types of pieces, they're always quite bad in theory. Um, the jacket looks very expensive. I'm sure it's a very nice fabrication, but in practice, it doesn't look like anything special. Yeah, feels like very sporty for sportiness's sake. Really, they're showing you where their market is. They're selling to women, not men. And that's fair. I, you really don't hear people talking about Valentino from the menswear side. It's just not something. We already talked about the V. I'm not going to talk about it again. Yeah, you just don't hear the dudes really going hard for Valentino. And in this collection, it feels like a bit of an afterthought. This is the same suit as earlier, just in a different uh, like colorway. Tuxedo. I do like this is kind of an innovation, the suiting, but with a, a mesh shirt underneath. That's something that hasn't really been done before. I think the side stripe may also be in the see-through mesh, which is interesting. But that's all that's interesting about it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's not great. It's just that feel that neckline it feels very demna. Very demna. This uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the like Mohawk, the punk styling is back. We've seen enough. We're just seeing the same things over and over. Okay. All right, Valentino, listen, it wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad. It just wasn't exciting. You know what I mean? Uh, everything was well made. Everything looked good. I'm sure it feels good too, but it wasn't as good as any of these. It was bit. It's not quite as bad as anything in the C tier, but not quite as good as anything in the B tier. I think it's at the bottom of the B tier because it was significantly better than the Sune connection collection. Uh, yeah, B feels about right to me. And coming up after Valentino now, A Cold Wall by Samuel Ross, I believe is the designer's name. And this is kind of like an entry level luxury brand. Everything is much more affordable than most of the other stuff on this list, especially if you can get it on sale. And it's kind of streetwear, kind of techy, but Samuel Ross is kind of like a designer's designer. People seem to really respect his work, and I've never really gotten fully into it. So let's see what's going on. All right, I wasn't sure how active ACW was, but we do have Spring 2023, which is the same as every other active brand. So I haven't paid attention to them in some time. So I'm excited to see what we've got here. And it is a lookbook style, not a runway. So first things first, a jacket. Printed jacket with some like stuff poking out from underneath. This is one thing the ACW is really good at is doing these new treatments to things like stuff that people just haven't really seen before. The way he approaches uh, the visuals of a piece are often quite unique. It's just the materials aren't as high end as most brands. The construction isn't as high end. And that's where it kind of falls off because he is trying to work at a different price point than most other luxury brands. This right here is very Virgil Abloh feeling. But for all I know, Samuel Ross did it first and Virgil copied him. So, you know. This is very techy right here, like a zip up sweater, this crossbody. It feels very like Stone Island to me. Now we're getting sporty, but with a knit. Okay, I vibe with this shirt. Looks very classic, very like 70s. I ain't mad about it. <clears throat> Shoes. That's an ugly shoe. God damn. God damn. Yeah, feeling very, very Stone Island. Still feel Stone Island. Still feel Stone Island. It's just like tech outerwear. Even this. Although I like the treatment. But I can't tell. Is it like a linen? If it is, we can talk. That's a, it's a cool piece with a cool effect. But it doesn't feel like crazy high fashion. 
this is probably the most high fashion feeling piece yet because of that harsh contrast with the neckline, that, that deep red. Very boring logo piece. Feels like the kind of thing that you'd see up on the, you know, front wall of the brand boutique. Like outside the Calvin Klein. So that's what it looks like. It looks like Calvin Klein photography. I wasn't even going to talk about that piece. All over logo piece. That's wild. This dye treatment is wild. Super over dyed, almost painted, maybe. There's some cool stuff in there, but it's too bad it's also close up. This looks very over treated, very like hand done, which is cool. This looks more like artisan. I don't know if it is, but that's how it looks. And, and like, that's all we get. And that's the end of it. So equal wall, nothing blew me away. It was very, very standard. What level was it on? C tier? B tier? It was not B tier. I'll tell you that right now. C. So the problem is it didn't have any pieces that blew me away. Whereas a lot of these brands did at least like one or two right there. It's the C tier. Marine Sayer really bummed me out. But Cool at least didn't bum me out. So I guess C is where it goes. Next up, uh, this is kind of in a similar family to a cold wall. 1017 Alix 9SM by Matthew M. Williams, currently also designing for Givenchy. So Alix is kind of like the budget option. And then if you want to spend crazy amounts of money, you go get Givenchy. But I'm curious to see, has Alix suffered now that Matthew M. Williams is giving so much attention to Givenchy? Because that's like, you know, the big money maker. So Alix, what's going on? All right, spring 2023, right off the bat, got some flowiness to it, feeling quite easy. It's usually very like minimalist uh, in the approach, but also a bit techy, but very clean. All right. This feels very like, just like fashion-y. You look at it and it screams fashion. Like what is this neck thing doing there? What's the purpose of it? I don't know, but it looks cool, right? Mm. I like the shoes. Cool silhouette. The rest of the look is like, okay. A little like dog collar, but it feels kind of inauthentic. This looks really cheap. This this zipper going down. Now the same like look just in black. In black, it feels much more Rick Owens. Nah, same look in white. Same thing in black. I see Williams, you got to spend more time. Don't just give us the same thing over and over. Man, I should like this so much more than I do. I think it's the cut, the fit of this button up hoodie open knit thing just doesn't feel right to me. Cool belt. I don't get what's going on there, but it's cool. Leather pants always looks good. I like the cut of those. The women are getting some cool leather stuff going on, except the logo across the front is like a lot. All right, here we go. The men get one. That's a big boy leather jacket. Kind of reminds me of like some vet moss stuff that I've seen. Um, it's like trying a little bit too hard. The length feels a little bit weird. The cut feels a little bit weird, but I like the ideas that are happening. And the pants... I think I like too. I like the length of those and the cut of those. Angry boy coming down in the white leather. Eh, yeah, sure. The cut's better on this. They've The length is just a bit higher, I think, and that makes it look a bit better. Where are you going dressed like this? You know what I mean? I get it's fashion. A lot of times you look completely impractical, impractical but this guy, I just don't understand where in the real world he exists. And this is a real world kind of brand, right? This is a brand that's supposed to be accessible and wearable. This is just like two layered, but then when you leave the sleeves bare, it feels off balance. I like those curving zips on the pants though. This is gonna be a tough one to grade. We already talked about this stuff. The proportions feel all wrong on that one. Same here. I just, he used to be very good at proportions, I feel like. And now everything's coming out wrong. Like everything up at the top here feels very tortured. 
Um, once again, I like the pants. He's kind of killing it in the pants game. It's just everything up top is falling short for me. Yeah, same here. Cool jeans. I don't understand what's happening at the top. And we're just getting it in a bunch of colorways. And then we get some a denim. I don't know what that design is. This just, the color story doesn't work on this. I don't know who put that together. The colors work slightly better on here, but this feels like Balenciaga from like eight seasons ago. This guy looks cool, but not high fashion. This looks like an Element logo or something, like early 2000s skateboarding logos, which I guess maybe are coming back in right now. All right, I think I think it's over. We end with a shirtless man. All right, that's Alix. All right, Matty boy, where does your brand land? Where's your brand land? Blech. Okay. Certainly was an S tier. Certainly was an A tier. Was it B tier? Close. I could see it landing at the bottom of the B tier. But in reality, I think it was more C. I think that's top of the C tier because of the pants. The tops were Marshall's clearance, like upper Marshall's clearance level. The pants were more like B tier. So we even out right at the top of the C is, and I think that's fair. All right, next up, we got to look at Anne de Mulemeester. What a name. Is that de, de Mulemeester? I think that sounds right. It sounds very European coming out of my tongue, you know, Central European. Okay, Anne. I'm just going to say Anne. <laughs> Let's check it out. All right, so spring 2023, we've got it. The question is, is it a co-ed show? Do we have menswear? Uh, off the bat, I don't think so. Uh, here. Sometimes it's so hard to tell. Okay, that's, is that rude to say? I don't, I don't know, but it's just the truth. I think so. Or at the very least, yeah, this is menswear. Okay. And in Mulemisa, I know people love this brand and I've never dove in properly. I've never taken a proper look at Anne's stuff. I don't think Anne still designs for it. It's someone else now, right? Or am I confusing that with someone else? I'm just going to stop talking and talk about the clothes. Okay. I think this is denim. I'm assuming, unless it's a type of like very light leather. I like it. I do. I like the jewelry. Good styling. Um, simple, basic shirt underneath, a little bit sheer. Pants are a very modern cut. Yeah, there's nothing to be mad about with that one. And here we get the same look, but with brown pants, maybe different shoes. It's just a bit too similar. Maybe the exact same thing. But we are playing on some common themes here. Uh, this looks like a leather jumpsuit. I really like the bottom half of this. Incredibly flattering cut. The tank top, I don't love. The undershirt, just a bit boring. Um, the shoes I'd love to talk about, it's just they're kind of covered. It's hard to, to get enough info to be able to judge them properly. Interesting. This is another jumpsuit. And this one, I like the proportions more. A huge bottom half, but a much more fitted top half makes it look like a proper button-down shirt. That's cool. It's pretty innovative. The hat. The fedoras are back, baby, but it's like an oversized fedora. Oh, so many miladies are coming once we get a hold of these hats, okay? Hello, milady. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Is this a single bag or is this two bags? I like it if this is a single bag. Don't make me buy two. Just give me this. So it's like the pouches at the sides. I vibe with that. Uh, the pants, still good. They've all been fairly similar, uh, but I've liked all of them. The bags and leather are sick. I will say that much. Okay. Once it gets into white, it starts looking a bit weird. I think this is the wrong model. Like this, it looks like Ryan Trahan up there. If any of you know that YouTuber, 
If you don't look him up and imagine him in this look on the runway, it's just like, it's too much for me. The women's wear and men's wear is looking very similar, which I like the cohesiveness, you know? So this is like a sheer shirt over the button down, which is something that's so different from the norm that it kind of blows my mind and I think is blowing my mind in a good way. Um, I love when someone does something unexpected, but that's just so simple. As with most things, I think it looks a bit better in black there. Okay. And we're starting to repeat the silhouettes a bit. Starting to look similar, so I think I'm ready to judge this. All right, Anne. I liked everything. I don't think there was really anything there other than maybe the white suit, the Ryan Tran one that I didn't like. But there was nothing that I think I loved. So, was it as good as any of these? No. Was it as good as any of these? Yes. And it was better than anything in this C tier. Uh, was it better than Valentino? Yes. Was it better than the row? Yes, Dior. Yes. Right there. Mid B tier, based on what I saw. People are going to be mad at me for that because they love that brand, but I think that's fair. All right, next up, next up. Issey Miyake. Unfortunately, just recently passed away, but I'm assuming there's there's a new collection here to look at. So, legend in the game, Issey. Let's check it out. All right, we've got spring 2023. Is it co-ed? This is mainline Issey Miyake, not the, like, en place. So, I don't know if there's menswear in these. In the first nine looks, there isn't any. No, I think this is all women's wear. Okay, interesting. So, designers... Home plus a must be the only we do have spring 2023 all right i think this is fair to look at i'm down all right so of course on plus a isi miyaki very well known for its pleating techniques and this one right off the bat quite interesting very feminine the shorts i really like i like the cut of those the shoes are boring as hell but i'm not gonna Get too mad about it. A lot of like the Japanese brands like doing these like Converse Jack Purcell type silhouettes. Nah. Whoa, why do you why'd you do that to me? But no, we can get back past that. I don't like that one. It's kind of giving me like Craig Green. It's it's just like a bit too blobby. But the neckline is cool. I never know what to make of own plus stuff. I used to have a long sleeve jacket that looked almost identical to this. I liked it. Again, the shorts very in right now. The knees, they out, they out and about. Uh, this is cool. Everything's cool, but by design, this brand I don't think is ever going to blow you away. It's made to be like easy and wearable, you know? What are these, what's the deal with these pants? Pants are sick. If I could get these in black, I bet these are comfortable as all hell. It's like a thermal waffle knit, but like more open. I'm down. Like this looks like the kind of thing, especially the, the these pants and this shirt coming out underneath is the kind of thing you see in like every like easy breezy casual luxury like try on video on TikTok. Like it's always like the fear of God essentials and the, the Bode, our legacies, you know, it fits in very well with that kind of aesthetic. And that's just not really me. But I appreciate that it gets a bit more wild with the color palettes. Uh, but it's still not anything mind-blowing. Very cool collar here, like sateen shirt, cropped pants. Very, like, Japanese, you know? Well, and then they do this stuff. And of course, for doing these kinds of shows, they're going to be in the most wearable, comfortable stuff. So it's not going to be crazy exciting. And I think we have to leave it there. I wish there was more to say, but on plus Issey Miyake, it just kind of is what it is. So at this, at this point, it's more of like a product than it is a fashion brand. Because fashion should be pushing stuff forward. 
Om Plissé just kind of does what it does and does it really well because they own that entire pleated polyester space. Uh, so where can I in good conscience put it? I feel like once you get into the B tier, you're starting to do really innovative stuff. So I feel like the C tier is like more fitting for it, but it's got to be towards the top. Like, I feel like it's equal with something like an Alix. All right. Uh, and I think that's fair. All right. We've got a super fat C row now. I mean, I guess that's fair, you know, in the, the normal distribution, the bell curve BC is right where things should land, although our clearance rack is getting fairly heavy. Anyway, who's next? Vivian Westwood. Okay. I have no idea what Vivian Westwood is up to lately. So let's find out. And this is mainline Vivian Westwood, not the, the Andreas Kronthaler. Is that his name? Her husband, right? Her husband that also has a line. This is mainline. Uh, it looks already off the bat like there is menswear, although it looks fairly unisex to me, right? But what do we have? Oh, we have lots of like group looks and things like this. But look one, clearly it's not heavily designed, right? There's not a lot of design going on here. It's more for the look of it. These people dress like this walking down the streets of London, I would presume. Uh, what do we got? Born to rewild. Is that just like talking about her longevity and fashion and like being an OG punk and things like that? I like working the orbs in, in this top already, although that's the women's wear. We're not paying as much attention to that. Um, these are some very generic looking slides. I feel like every single brand now has like some foam slides. I don't think it's necessary. It's been done enough. This is cool. Very like American, I almost want to say. It almost reminds me of like a r classic Ralph Lauren type of thing. I think this pattern matching, it doesn't work, but I also get it. Where are they? They're at like a museum. I see Daniel Arsham's name up here. Interesting. How are the shoes? I want to know about the shoes. Some nice little derbies there. Okay. Okay. Nothing like mind blowing yet, but maybe, maybe. Big chunky pearls. A split cardigan. Two different patterns on each side. And just like a scribbly orb of a pant. The like planet orbs look like some real bad graphic design. I will say that. But the split scribbles, it kind of honestly reminds me of like um, some Enfant Riche de Prime stuff that I've seen. So I do like that. These socks with these shoes are really cool. Good looks. And the pearls too. Good styling. This was a good look. Pleasantly surprised by this one. Okay. It's a lot. I think it's more just... I don't know. I never know what to say about those. It seems like too mm, aware of itself about what it's doing. Cool. The women's wear looks cool too. Uh, they're definitely going with like a gender bending thing in this collection. It's a cool sweater vest though. I don't hate it. The pants, they're just too loud. I hate these. Ew. It just looks like some bad Amiri, you know? And they're trying too hard with the slides. They're just too chunky. Okay. Okay. What do we got? What do we got? Let me in. Let me in. Here are the orbs on this. Suits are tasteful. I like the jewelry. The shirt underneath. I like this huge hem. You see the ribbed hem there? Normally, it would probably be like this big on most sweaters. But this one, it's like this big. That's cool. Nice enough belt. The gloves, I'm assuming, are leather, like a light blue leather. And the boots are very classic. It's a good look. Yeah, I'm not mad about that. That was cool. I know it's women's wear, but very Balenciaga and how destroyed it is. What is happening here? Cool buttons. I like the buttons. I don't really care too much about the jacket itself. I don't like that it's like a beach look with this very heavy trench coat. That feels a bit off to me. All we get here are pants, and they're, they look like pants. Yep, 
good fit. That's very like Rick Owens uh, Versace, kind of like a split half between the two. Cute sweater. Looks like Comme des Garçons play, but it's still cute. Cool dress too. If you size this up, the skirt. If you sir, if you size this up like four sizes, suddenly it would look like Rick Owens. I like the the photo too. Very cool. We don't need to talk about this one. Nope. No need to talk about it. Have we seen enough? Too much. Too much. Okay. I think it. I think we call it here. I think we've seen what we need to see. Cool cut on the blazer. All right, we're done. So Vivian Westwood, I like that much more than I thought I would. Um, I wouldn't wear most of it, but I would wear more of it than I thought I would. And even the stuff I wouldn't wear, for the most part, I at least liked. So where does that land Vivian Westwood? Uh, it was better than anything in the C tier. It was better than Valentino. It was better than the row. It was better than Dior. It was better than Ann. It was better than 99%. Ooh, it's right in like this realm right here. I think it was maybe right below Prada. Yeah, that was a good B collection from Vivian Westwood. She's a bit like hidden miss, a bit all over the place, but you got to kind of appreciate that. So yeah, I think that's fair. And now we've got to look at Bottega Veneta. It's I've always had trouble pronouncing I always want to go Veneta. Or Veneta. I think you just kind of toss it off like that. The Big Green Goblin Bottega. Let's check it out. All right, spring 2023. I've got to assume this is co-ed. Uh, new designer. I think this is, yeah, Mathieu Blasi. I think it's only his second collection. Yeah, living up to a sensational debut. So this is the sophomore effort. The second collection. What do we got? It looks like very um, self-consciously basic. Like it's it's intentionally doing basics and doing wearables, you know? So my question is how much of this is leather? I know the pants are leather. We know that. Well, you wouldn't know it from looking at it, but the pants are leather. The bag, of course. The t-shirt, I don't think so. And the sweater, the sweater could be. It's just hard to say from a photo, um, but it's a it's a nice enough norm core look. Um, the sizing very intentional. I understand it. The way he's kind of standing makes it seem makes me think it might be leather. I think I think this is the pants. I'd assume so. The shoes, big mock toe. It looks ugly to me. The bags are just classic Bottega. Big furs. Big furs. Okay. This, I think, is just a standard button down. It's just too self consciously normal, I think. I gotta go back to the coverage. I gotta read this first. I gotta understand. Okay. Unique is the operative word. Uh, diversity. Idea is the world in a small room. Different characters. Um,. Wardrobing, creating like an everyday wardrobe. Yes, that makes sense. Um, picking up the opening looks, though they look like denim, flannel, and cotton tees were all leather. They are all leather. Damn. Like it completely changes what you think of this show, right? Like when you realize everything on this look is leather, it changes things and it makes you really respect it. But how do you judge it? I think it's kind of like when Demna did, like, I think it was silk t-shirts for the couture show. Yeah, you're just trying to take something to the next level, you know? I'm sure, oh my god, it's the pants in the classic, like, Bottega pattern, I think. Unless those are scales. Up close, they look more like scales. I like the boots. I, I, I see the uniform. I see what he's going for. It just, the concept is better than the execution. Like, this just looks ugly to me. It looks dated. Maybe it'll come back around at some point. Leather. 
you know, luxury, but is it doing anything new is my question. I think I have to check out at a certain point here because I've seen what I need to up to this point. That It doesn't look good. It looks expensive, but it doesn't look good. So Bottega, there were things about that that I found incredibly impressive, but impressive more than than good. Interesting more than good, you know? And for that reason, it's it was better than anything in the C tier, easy. Um I put it like right above Valentino in the B tier. Interesting. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more for this video. Let's do Stella McCartney. Stella McCartney is another person who, uh, when you think of menswear, you do not think of Stella McCartney. She makes menswear, but do people care about it? I don't really think so. I mean, I'm sure they're out there, but it's a she's an oft overlooked menswear designer, myself included. I don't really know much about what she does, so let's find out. So I have to assume she's still doing menswear. There must be a co-ed show. Spring 2023, good, good. And then the question is, where are the dudes at? Because they aren't on the first page here. Nope, still no men. Uh, interesting. Please tell me she still makes menswear. There's some cool stuff happening on the runway here, but just none of it was men's. Um, does resort have men? I don't think so. No. Okay, Google. All right, Sylla McCartney men's collection. What do we got? Let's go to her website. Accept the cookies. Track me. Track me as much as you want. Um, where would we find? Interesting. You've got women. And then you've got unisex. Did she really get rid of menswear? Or did she never do menswear to begin with? And what I was seeing was just the u unisex stuff. Oh, the Disney stuff is rough. And it all still looks like women's. I'm really confused. Help help me out here, internet. So here's here's Essence, the Essence men's page. I think it's all unisex stuff. C people have to stop doing Disney collabs. They're all so cringe. Who would pay money for these shoes, honestly? Brutal. I get that people watched lots of Disney growing up, so it holds a place in their heart, but my God. Whoa. That coat is gnarly. I do appreciate with Stella McCartney, I believe everything's vegan. Like no furs, no leathers, nothing like that. But I do think she doesn't officially make menswear after looking at this. And everything that's on this page is miserably ugly. <sighs> yeah, rough. That was literally like TJ Maxx, all the stuff. That's the stuff I would expect to buy at a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls. So for the first time this episode, we're going on the Marshalls clearance rack. And it was worse than, oh, I don't know if it was worse than Bape. Heavy clearance vibes right into the clearance bin. I need to like wash my eyes. I'm glad that was the last one because I need to take a shower now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time because we've got a lot of designers to go.